Hi, Ben here, and we're in the Kydex department of the workshop today. So Kydex, it's not everybody's cup of tea. Um, basically, Kydex is used for lots of different applications, but obviously in the knife making sort of fraternity, we use it for making sheaths. So Kydex is one of the manufacturer's trade names. It's actually manufactured out in the United States. Um, it was originally developed in the 60s as a, a wall finish for like kitchens and things. But one of the knife makers sort of spotted its uses, the fact that it's thermo moulding, so you basically warm it and it becomes very uh, malleable and you can shape it. They thought, hang on, this is going to make an absolutely bomb-proof uh, sheath material. Obviously, leather's lovely to use as a sort of traditional sheath for your hunting knife uh, and things like that. But obviously it has disadvantages in the sense that leather can be uh, exposed to moisture, which it doesn't particularly like. So if you're going into a very wet or hostile environment, then Kydex is a really great option. More than anything, the fact that it can be very lightweight and thin, very slender. Also, you get this lovely self-locking system with it. So when you mould the Kydex around the knife itself, you get this natural retention. So you don't need necessarily straps or clasps and things like that to actually hold the knife in the sheath. Now, the Kydex itself, you can get it in a a wide range of colours uh, and also different textures that they put on the surface of the Kydex. So I use what they refer to as hair cell, that's the sort of patterning that they put on there. Um, you can get ones that are simulated to look like leather and things like that. They do it in loads of different sort of camouflages, uh, even real tree, things like that. Some people even have flags and uh, logos printed on it and things like that. The colours that I tend to use are a bit more sort of simple. I like the OD green and the blacks. If you want a sheath that's going to stand out in the woods so you don't lose it, the hunter orange or um, uh, bright colours like that are a great option. Um, but yeah, camouflage great if you want to be a bit more tactical and things like that. It's not the easiest thing to get your head around when you first start. I've been given a lot of help from uh, friends and knife makers out in the States, so Tom Crine out in the States and also uh, Duncan down at Dorset Woodland Blades in, in the UK. He gave us a few pointers on the Kydex when I first started. You will need some form of heat source to make the Kydex uh, floppy to mould it around your, your knife. So you can use something as simple as a heat gun, the kind that you'd use for stripping paint. You can use uh, a, a little toaster oven. I've got a little toaster oven set up here for it. Some people use their domestic ovens. I would say try and avoid that because if you get this too hot, it does give off some pretty sort of horrible gases and stuff. So don't do it in your in your oven that you're going to be cooking your lunch in the following the following afternoon. Um, but yeah, simple heat gun will get you started. You will also need to make a form of press that will allow you to mould the knife. Well, the sheath around the knife more than anything. Uh, and I made these very simple uh, presses. So they're just a piece of scrap, uh, three quarter inch ply, and then some of this very thick heat resistant foam. Um, you can use the foam that you get on like camp mats, but you'll need to use two or three layers and it won't last as long as the proper uh, molding foam that you can buy from the States. Like I say, most of my supplies come in from uh, knife kits out in, the, uh, out in the States. You can find a few people now selling a few bits and pieces like the Kydex and the eyelets and things like that that you'll need to hold the sheath together. But yeah, most of it comes over from the US. But we thought it'd be fun to show you how you, you go about making the Kydex sheath. So we've got a few different setups here. So I'm going to pick a piece that I want to mould around some of our little thorns that we're making at the moment. So this is a bit of orange, I'm going to chuck it in the oven. It takes about three minutes to get sort of floppy enough to mould around the, the knife. So I normally have two or three of them in rotation. So we'll pop that in the oven and set the time for three minutes. So temperature wise, what I run my Kydex at, I've played around and I find that about 180 degrees C seems to work perfectly. Um, obviously if you're using your your conventional sort of toaster oven, you've got the thermostat that's built into the machine, you'll probably find that it will be a little bit inaccurate so you'll have to play around with the temperature until you get it correct by putting a, a sort of normal oven thermometer in there and checking that the temperatures uh, work out. What I've done is I've added what we call a PID controller to the oven so it's not using this thermostat anymore it's using this digital one 
Now this was made by my friend Ant at 7K Metalworks. He calls them a hot box which you can add to your toaster oven for Kydex, your heat treat oven, your tempering oven, things like that. So check out Ant if you need any more information on these. But the advantage of having the PID controller is you can set the temperature, it will hold it very accurately, like within a degree. It will fluctuate slightly if you open the door, but basically once it's come back to sort of the door shut and it stabilises, yeah, very, very accurate. It means you won't get your Kydex overheated, it won't melt, it won't give off any fumes, and also it won't shrink. That's the other disadvantage. If you get Kydex too hot, it can shrink quite a lot. So a PID controller is absolutely perfect. So while the Kydex is in the oven getting up to temperature, um, we need to make sure that the knife doesn't actually get scratched on the inside of the sheath. So we need to create a very thin gap. Now the easiest way to achieve that is to actually apply tape to the surface of the blade. So some people use duct tape, some people use uh, like insulation tape. I find that the uh, this blue masking tape, this is actually 3M I think it is, um, but the, the low tack blue masking tape that you get in decorator supplies and things like that works really good. So I'll normally add at least two layers of this. Um, depending on the blade shape, sometimes I'll actually add a third layer to it as well. Um, but as you can see, look, you can just squeeze it around the actual shape of the, the knife. You can still see the profile of the knife and that's what we want to create. But we just want to create a very, very slight gap. Um, Depending on the grind that you've got on the knife, flat grinds and things like that, you'll probably find that you don't need quite so much tape. If you've got a Scandi grind like we've got on this, this little blade, you'll find that you want to have at least, at least two layers, if not three. Um, sometimes what I'll do, depending on the shape of the knife as well, is add little packers and things like that into the handle recess. Um, obviously you have to sort of experiment a little bit and know exactly how much tension and retention you need on the Kydex and how much you don't. Um, one thing I will do before we pull it out the uh, the Kydex out of the oven is just trim some of this excess tape off. We don't want too much around the actual blade because that will actually create a gap in the actual sheath itself. Uh, it doesn't have to be super duper super duper accurate. And I leave that little extra bit of tape in that little finger finger choil as well. So um, that will actually add as a, a little bit of a packer as well. So we've got that prepped. The Kydex is pretty much up to temperature. Temperature wise you'll have to play around yourself depending on the thickness of Kydex you're using. This is actually 1.5 mil which is the 0 0.06 if you're looking at the imperial side of things. Um, that seems to be about the perfect thickness of Kydex for most sort of everyday carry knives, belt sheaths and things like that. I do use the 2 mil which is slightly thicker for the parangs and bigger blades like that. So we've got that ready to go. We'll get the Kydex out of the oven. Hopefully you'll see how floppy it is. So it's now like a piece of sort of wet lasagna almost, real floppy. And then we're gonna slide that in, position the blade where we want it, push it against the back edge of the Kydex, squeeze it down. This is why I've got gloves on, because it won't be hot enough to burn me, but it just makes it very uncomfortable. Position it with my hands, squeeze that, that mold down. And then we'll open up our clamp and we'll apply pressure onto the actual mould itself, like so. And now what you can see is it starts to compress the uh, foam, which is going to mould that sort of malleable kydex all around those intricate shapes of the knife. And you just let it sit there for a few minutes to cool down. Obviously because it's encased in that foam, it's going to take a little, little longer to cool down than if the kydex was out on the bench. So I'll have two or three presses and two or three knives ready to go and just keep rotating. So yeah, we'll let that cool down and then we'll do the next bit. So while we've got one cooling in the press, we've got another bit of Kydex warming up in the oven. I've got one blade already molded and this is cooled. So at this stage, to keep my rotation going, is I'll start to mark out some holes for the eyelets to go in. Now, the eyelets not only hold the sheath together, but they also allow you to use different uh, belt configuration so you can either add sort of these titanium belt clips you can add tech locks you can add moly loops all sorts of things basically but I try and keep those whole spacings the same so it gives people a choice of what they're gonna what they're gonna use basically 
With the little thorns, we're just adding a simple little uh, paracord tie through the top two holes. So basically, the eyelets hold it together and give you a lot of options to add different belt configurations and fire steels and things like that on bigger knives. So I'm going to mark that out. What I tend to do, rather than mark these individually each time to try and keep them nice and consistent, once I'm happy that I've got a pattern that works, is I make a, well basically I sacrifice a, a, a Kydex sheath, split it down the back so that I've got one half of these tack, what we call taco style sheaths and then I can lay that on, slide it up against the, the blade itself so it's in the same place and then using a pencil I can just mark around it and mark all those holes and things like that and then take it over to the pillar and drill those holes for the eyelets. Now the eyelets themselves are quarter inch so I use a quarter inch drill bit to drill those holes and it'll end up looking something like that. So that's ready for cutting and shaping then. So we've drilled the holes and obviously we've got our profile marked out ready for cutting. <laughs> Top tip, it might seem obvious to some but make sure that you actually take that blade out. Don't take the blade out until you've drilled the holes in case it moves. But once you've got the holes drilled, take the blade out before you actually cut the profile. So I'm just going to cut it on a bandsaw. You don't need a particularly sharp blade, but this is just a very narrow quarter inch blade, which will allow me to go around those curves. So we've cut the profile but obviously the saw leaves a fairly ragged edge so we'll take it through onto the grinder now and clean up that profile. So we'll clean up that profile now on the grinder. Now I find that these Trizac belts work really well for finishing the Kydex. If you are using a normal abrasive belt make sure you use an old one that's had all the grit stripped off it because we want to try and minimise the amount of grit that gets inside the sheath. Obviously with Trizac, they're sort of a structured abrasive, so there's no grit to actually come off them when you're using them. So we'll fire that up. Oh, one thing to mention, you want to run these relatively slowly, because obviously we don't want this plastic to get so hot that it melts. So nice and slow, and it'll work, work a treat. So that's cleaned that up nicely. Obviously you've got a few little raggedy ends and burrs, but I find that the best thing to take those off on is a little scotch right wheel, and you can just deburr all those edges then. So yeah, these little scotch right wheels seem to do a perfect job of just deburring the edge. And you see how I use my uh, trusty bit of antler just to open up that inside so I can chamfer the inside of the opening of the sheath as well. Now. I've not put any rivets in at this stage because I want to make sure that I can blow any of that dust out. Um, some people will clamp it all together and do all that process that I've just done. This is the way I do it. Uh, you could do whatever you like, but I like to try and keep that inside of that sheath as clean as possible. So we'll give that a blast out and then we're ready for the next bit. So we've now started to put the eyelets in. Now these are those little quarter inch eyelets that I said about. Now you can get different finishes, different colours. Uh, I like to go for these black ones. Now you have got a sort of show side, a presentation side. So I try and orientate it so this is the, the side that you're going to see the most because that's going to look the neatest. So we pop those through the hole. And you can get, obviously if you're only doing a couple of sheaths, you can get hand tooling to actually roll those eyelets over. I've got these eyelet forming dies in an arbor press because obviously when you're squeezing thousands of rivets together, it, it really speeds up the process. So you don't need a great deal of, of, of tonnage of pressure. This, I think this is a two ton arbor press, 
but you just gently squeeze that together and you can see it rolls over that eyelet slightly smaller than that on than that front side but that will be perfect and that that will be enough pressure to hold those two halves of the kydex together as well it's really annoying sometimes if you get grit or dirt on your tooling in your arbor press because those tiny little bits of dirt can create scratches on your eyelet and then they split you can take them out if that happens but it's a real pain so try and keep this nice and clean but yeah there you go it's all squeezed together so we've finished the sheath itself we've taken all the tape off and cleaned up the blade a little bit you'll find that the heat does make the tape stick a little bit but a bit of WD-40 will clean up the blade we've also added an extra little thumb ramp on this so if you need to add any extra features to your sheath like your little thumb ramps or you need to just change the retention a little bit or open up any areas where it's too tight then just using a heat gun but on the lowest setting you can then just apply some localized warmth to the kydex and make it malleable enough to just put, add those little features you will need to wear gloves because it will it will burn your fingers so we've had a little blood knot on this just to help it go in and out of the sheath but there you go, we've got our nice retention, so it locks in there, it's not going to fall out. So at that stage you could add those different belt clips if you wanted to. Um, but I think what we'll do is we'll just add our little necktie to it. So again, presentation side, I have that on the outside, so pass the string through. Now it's up to you whether you use paracord, some people use these uh, ball chains for going around your neck. Obviously you've got to be a bit more careful if you've got paracord as a necktie, because... Uh, Obviously, it won't break like those those ball chains. But I like a bit of paracord because if I'm out in the woods and I need to make a, an improvised uh, friction fire light, lighting kit, I've got a good bit of cord that I can use. So we just do a simple little knot on like that. So these are adjustable, basically. These are little fisherman's knots. So a little bit fiddly, but worth the effort. So that's adjustable, just like so. So we finished the little kydex sheath for the little thorn knife. So this is a very simple taco style sheath that we make that's a nice lightweight neck carry. Now this gives plenty of retention, still easy to draw, but makes a very nice lightweight little neck carry little style sheath. Now the techniques that we used in this video it will work whether you're doing a small little neck carry, whether you're using it for making a, a bigger sheath for a belt knife. So this is a big belt sheath that we make for our Vilmark model, and that incorporates one of those tech locks that we showed you. Now, when you're making a sheath for a bigger knife with more pronounced handle shape, handle scales, and a big pronounced finger guard, you'll notice that you get a much more positive snap as it goes back into the sheath. Now, really, that's where Kydex comes into its own. It basically is a thermal molding plastic, so you get that lovely self-locking fit around the knife itself, and that snap will prevent the knife from falling out, even if you're wearing it inverted on your belt or on your chest rig or anything like that. So, same technique, whether you're doing it little neck carry, belt sheath, or even one of our bigger belt sheaths that we make for our Orford Eban Parang. So this is a real big piece of Kydex. We end up using a bigger oven for warming it up and a much bigger press. Um, but yeah, uses a lot of materials, uses lots of eyelets, so make sure you practice on a smaller thing before you start going into a big, big project like this. This actually incorporates a slightly different belt system as well. So we make this from this little bracket from 3mm Kydex and then add a soft loop to it so that hangs a little bit easier and moves slightly more independently on your belt as well. So uh, yeah, so that works really nicely as well. Obviously the techniques that we've shown you, it's not the only way of going about things. It's just what I've picked up over the years and hopefully it will save you making expensive mistakes by doing the wrong thing in the very early days. So I hope you enjoyed that. We're trying to add a few extra knife making related videos to the channel. Obviously we're known for our woodworking videos previously, but 
the tools and the woodworking, they've got a nice symbiotic relationship and obviously we're using some of the tools in the woodworking video. So hope you enjoy seeing how the knives and the tools get born as well in the workshop. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, you'll get notifications when we're bringing out new videos. And yeah, if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or just drop us an email. But yeah, hope you enjoyed it.